근데 처음 만났는데 뭐한한한 한, 한 3개월 만났는데 전혀 아까 그거 같은 케미스트리가 없다. 그건 이제 곧곧 만나야지. 그러니까 많이 만나십시오. 개인 그러니까 한, 한 번에 또 가가지고 그냥 그러니까 뭐 이렇게 다 해결해 버리고 그러면 안 됩니다. 우리 뭡니까? 우리는 사이언티스트입니다, 그죠? 사이언티스트는 어, 어떻게 얘기하면 엑스페리멘탈리스트 어, 인건데 그러니까 엑스페리멘탈리스트한테 있어서 가장 중요한 건 뭡니까? 그러니까 해미 익스페리먼트인 거죠. 익스페리먼트를 해서 그 결과를 보고 그 좋은 결과를 갖다가 택해서 베리파이를 하는 건데 남녀관계에 있어서는 그러니까 어떻게 보면 익스페리먼트를 많이 해야죠. 근데 이제 그 선을 넘으시면 안 되고 그러니까 그 선, 그러니까 아, 왜 이렇게 좋아해? 너무 좋아하지 말고 그러니까 많이 그러니까 어, 이제 사귀어 봐야 됩니다. 그래야 어, 그래야 아, 정말 그러니까 그 relationship을 갖다 보면 그러니까 제대로 이제 규정을 할수 있는 거죠. 그런 거 하나 안 해보고 그냥 뭐 이렇게 옛날 뭐 우리 나 때도 안 그랬고 우리 부모님 때도 안 그랬던 그냥 뭐한 눈에 그냥 이게 뻑 가가지고 그냥 모든 걸다 결정하고 그러면 그거는 그러니까 이 사이언티스트답지 않는 행동입니다. 우리는 귀납법을 굉장히 존중합니다. 그렇죠? 경험 바탕을 둔 귀납법, 그죠? 실험을 많이 해서 다른 실험을 보고 통계학적으로 우리는 그러니까 분명히 그 판단을 해야 되는데. 근데 그러니까 전혀 그 여러분들이 여러분 자신을 천재라고 생각하고, 천재는 귀납법, 그러니까 그렇게 의지를 하지 않아요. 연역법 하죠. 그죠? 그러니까 특히 이제 인문학 쪽의 사람들, 뭐 데카르트나 헤이 델핀. Do you know d e c a r t e Yeah, wow. Could you go call his name again? d e c a r t e Yeah, t h a 이제 사고를 갖다가 굉장히 그러니까 천재적, 그러니까 굉장히 이게 연역적으로 사고를 갖다가 하게 되는데 실질적으로 이렇게 사이언티스트들이 연역적으로 사고를 갖다가 할수 있는 거는 Theoretical chemistry 라든가 아니면 이쪽 발라지 않은 사람들 이외에는 많이 힘든 거예요. 게다가 요즘처럼 굉장히 이퀴먼트들이 에너지틱한 이퀴먼트들이 발달한 이런 상황에서 그러니까 굉장히 연역적으로 한다는 거는 이건 조금 위험한 그러니까 실제로 그렇잖아요. 그러니까 예를 들어서 어 우리가 바이러스라든가 뭐 이런 놈들을 갖다가 이제 우리가 이렇게 양 만들고 뭐 이렇게 그러니까 그러고 앉아 있는데 근데 만약에 우리가 이 어떤 이, 이 그러니까 뭐 마이크로스코피 정말 정교한 게 있어서 딱 그놈 가지고 이제 이렇게 딱 이렇게 렌즈처럼 눈에 딱 붙이고 난 다음에 딱 보면 세포 위에서 이제 이 바이러스가 기어가는 게 보이고 그 바이러스를 갖다가 여러분 그러니까 띄울 수 있는 나노 와이어 같은 걸 갖다 만들 수 있다면 그러니까 여러분 의사 찾아갈 필요 없는 거죠 딱 자기 상처 보면서 이렇게 떼내는 거죠 이렇게. 에이즈 바이러스만 일로 와라 이렇게 딱딱딱딱 해가지고 그러니까 지금 자꾸 이제 그렇게 하려고들 이제 노력을 한 그러니까 하고 있는데 어, 그런 의미에서 볼 때는 이 그러니까 연역법적인 사고가 굉장히 중요한 겁니다. 아, 이제 균합법적인 사고가. 하지만 근데 이제 균합법적인 사고를 갖다가 여러분들이 이끌어오기 위해서는 연역법적인 사고를 갖다 가진 사람들의 노력이 참 컸어요. 그 사람들이 이제 앞에 있어서 이제 탁지를 갖다가 안 하고, 막그 사람들 한 100만 명 정도 죽이고 그런 일이 없었으면 과학적인 발전은 없었을 겁니다. 그렇게 보면. 그러니까 중세나 아니면 이때 굉장히 이제 뭐, 야, 너 하느님 믿는데 어떤 방식으로 믿냐? 어, 성모 마리아 믿냐? 예! 푹! 저안 믿습니다. 왜안 믿어? 푹! 그런 스타일입니다. 그러니까 그와 같은 중세를 갖다가 행복하려고 이제 했던 것들이 좋아하는 익스페리멘탈 뭐 하여튼 그러니까 그런 이유의 바탕을 둔 과학적인 사고죠. 아, 신이 두렵지 않습니다. 뭐 이렇게 시작해서 아, 근데 이제 신은 여러분 두려워하셔야 되고 왜냐하면 죽기 때문에 그렇죠? 하여튼 이 과학을 갖다가 이렇게 여러 방면으로 생각을 하다 보면 재미없는 형모는 아닙니다. 물론 뭐 여러분 어드바이저 아, 선생님 이 앞에서 아, 이, 지금 캐릭을 하면서 재밌게 이제 강의하기는 하는데 아, 그러다 보니까 이제 제게 앉아 있는 델핀은 이제 아테카 등등 마이클 등등은 이제 굉장히 이제 무슨 소리 하는지 제 사람 자기를 욕하는지 뭐 어, I just talk to this guy. You are very, very wonderful people. <웃음> <웃음> so 
So, uh, fun is most important thing. You have a you know, relationship between uh, men and uh, women. Yes, we actually delight uh, the uh, uh, CFSDR. As that's the condition, uh, as you guys know, DCA over A2. Thanks. So, the some more, well, direction goes, uh, A goes to B, <coughs> and this is illiberal direction, so we have just a K, uh, K here. Uh, let's say this one is the zeroth order, so this could be K0, and here, our A could be just a K0. The concentration, any concentration, A or B, there's no relation between uh, this uh, rate uh, relation. Um, so, for uh, concentration A, you simply have CA0, CA over theta. This is our A, so this could be K0. Okay? So, finally, you can have C, the concentration could be CA0 minus K0. Okay. Uh, this is uh, CFSTR, right? And then just order, and then inverse flow reaction, right? So compared to the uh, flow reactor, what is the flow reactor? Uh, well, as as you just check the uh, the flow reactor, uh, you know concentration. At this, at this condition, well, these two are the same, right? Just check it. So, if the condition, zero order, inverse reaction, the proper reactor, and CFSTR, the concentration A are the same. Interesting, right? All right. And what about the, uh, uh, the steady state? This is not the uh, much uh, you know, SS, just the steady state. And first order, uh, and A equals B. So uh, the rate could be K1, C, C, A because this is first order with respect to concentration A. Right? So this could be CA0 minus CA over beta K1CA. So you can finally have CA could be CA0 1 plus K1 theta. Well, compared to the uh, uh, plug flow reactor, first order, and then uh, irreversible relation, A goes B. What is the uh, concentration of CA? It was CA0 exponential minus K theta, right? In this case, which reactor is, has higher efficiency? Well, think about that. Uh, this is the reactor. Hmm? And we just uh, uh, pour the uh, a very toxic chemical. Let's say uh, we are dealing with, this is pinol, right? Have you smelled the pinol before? Pinol. 
Pinot is very white, uh, solid. It is just like the cocaine, and uh, that is, maybe you guys ask me, Professor Dichus, have you ever seen cocaine before? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I have, but I never ever, you know, Okay, I swear. Anyway, he <laughs> put the things. Well, just put it a couple of current here. This is dichloro, monochloro, pinol. So, uh, dichloro pinol, dichloro pinol. This has been used for wood preserving material. Well, think about that. Well, you guys, you guys think on wood is very strong material, right? Uh, as uh, this to one of uh, Sanjung, did you just uh, kill the bug over there? Okay, so uh, Sanjung just uh, take it, uh, took uh, the bug away. Uh, the bug really like the uh, the woods, right? Uh, but if you really want to use this wood material for desk and for you know furniture, the important thing is you guys don't want to you know live with uh, those bugs. So what you should do is. The first time, just uh, take out the bug from the wood, uh, from the forest, and then put the, uh, the whole bunch of wood into the chemical bath, including this one, and including So uh, this is hexa, right? So hexa, chloro, benzene. These are actually uh, bug killing chemical compounds. So if you just uh, put the, uh, the bunch of you know, wood uh, into the, uh, this bath, you can see uh, the bugs uh, inside of uh, the wood actually, you know, are killed in seconds. And also, uh, this chemical uh, can protect uh, the structure of the wood and this can be widely used in 19, from 1960s, actually. But the problem is, is a rate of what are these? Chlorine, right? Chlorine is kind of fire, fire, solid fire. So that means this also causes some kind of fire effect if you just uh, you know, touch it. That means it can cause some kind of a very bad health effect. So these two also potential carcinogen, actually. So let's say you just uh, let's say this one is CA. Uh, you just uh, pouring uh, the uh, wastewater, including uh, this uh, dichlorophenol, and you want to uh, treat this one. <coughs> to CB. If so, this is actually CFSTR. Well, as you guys know, believe me, proper reactor is a little bit uh, different. Just like this, right? And instead uh, of this impeller, you can adopt some air diffuser Here, so that the uh, the air can bubble uh, inside of uh, this plug flow reactor. Let's say all of the uh, environmental conditions are the same. Uh, this uh, CFSTR and PFR. What reactor degrades more this chemical, this toxic chemical, based on these two degradation? Equation. Michael, which one degrades more? Well, you guys can actually, uh, you know, draw the concentration profile actually like this. Or, well, you just put the uh, some kind of uh, this chemical measurement uh, probe so that you can measure the concentration with respect to time, right? So you, you actually experimentally uh, do the research work. So you begin to know, become to know which reactor has better, you know, efficiency, right? But you are the, uh, not, uh, well, except him, 
four of you are uh, actually uh, environmental engineer, right? Engineer means U.S. can predict using what? Jutek. Mathematics. Because you know the theory, using the mathematics, you can predict the concentration of this chemical. Because these are the governing equation to predict the concentration of this chemical with respect to what? Time. Retention time, actually. But as a chemist, you just put the, uh, the probe uh, inside the uh, reactor, you can measure it. So, usually, engineer do the uh, simulation using computer by running mathematical model. And the uh, scientists usually do some experimental work. And then professors usually compare these two and judge which one is right. So, uh, you know, professor job is not that bad, is it? All right, so uh, well, think about that. This is CA and this is T. No, uh, let's say this is beta. And then, if you just, uh, all the experimental environmental conditions are the same with these two, uh, all you want to do is just uh, plug these two, uh, you know, equation, right? So uh, anybody who can predict which one has higher uh, degradation efficiency, is it uh, CFSTR or is it PFR? Tom, do you have any idea on it? This one is exposure. This one is just, you know, so which one has a higher, better degradation efficiency? Michael? I think exponential uh, degrades faster. Yep. What about Tom? Sorry, I also do that. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't like that? Firstly, I think plus one degrades. More? Firstly. Faster? Let's say second. Second, I think second one. Uh, in this case, I think um, uh, we really have very good, you know, experiment, uh, I mean, computer system. Uh, let's do it. Well, <coughs> when I was a, a college boy, um, well, there is some, um, well, Macintosh, well, actually Macintosh was developed uh, 19, you know, the rate of 1980s, actually. Uh, how can I? Let's say uh, the CA concentration uh, is 10, initial concentration is 10, the concentration of the uh, 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 bichlorophenol uh, is 10 milligram per liter, all right? And then the K value will be uh, uh, 0 0.5. But this is actually a first order, so it will be minus uh, per hour. And then we have different theta, right? So uh, using the uh, 
Excel, I'd like to Excel here. Uh, I, uh, all of you, how to use the Excel? No? Oh, okay, so I just want to skip some part. Well, uh, look at this. Well, we just want to uh, make the, uh, the theta, theta, this is the, uh, the hydro hydraulic rotation time, and we want to know the concentration of uh, CFS, CFSTR, right? And we also want to know uh, the concentration of PFR, right? And then uh, the theta, well, let's say uh, this one is one, two, three, the time, uh, different, you know, hour, one hour, two hour, three hour, four, uh, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Think about that. We have uh, uh, the same, you know, uh, this volume of uh, room. Let's say this is rector, and then uh, you can actually have different, you know, data uh, to fill this room with water. I mean, wastewater. How can you do that? Well, if you just uh, increase the flow rate, you can have faster short, uh, uh, short uh, theta. And if you are using, uh, you know, uh, slow flow rate, well, actually you have a long theta value, right? And then, what is the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the equation of CFSTR. So, uh, the, you know, the initial concentration of this chemical is 10, right? So, 10, uh, and then, uh, divided by, 
uh, one plus what you should do is k one uh, k one is zero point five right so put the uh, uh, zero point five and then uh, what you should do is theta value theta is uh, this one the first time what is this oh okay. And you need to multiply and then put this one. Voila. You have uh, the first, you know, after one hour retention time, the concentration 10 milligram per liter actually degre uh, uh, decreased to 6.67 uh, actually. If you want to do more the concentration, you just uh, copy and copy this block. And you have uh, the degradation file here. So I'd like to, uh, you know, draw this degradation profile uh, at the figure. Uh, what is the? Uh, okay. Okay. Here. Yep. Well, actually, why? Uh, axis is the uh, the theta, uh, no, 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 the concentration of C, and uh, uh, the x you know axis is the uh, you know hydraulic retention time. All right, and what about the uh, PFR? PFR has different you know, equation. So the first time here, C A zero, which is ten, and multiplies. Uh, well, exponential. Uh, this is the function of the exponential, and then minus k is 0 0.5, right? And then times theta, right? So uh, just to touch this, voila, you have this concentration. Compared to CF STR concentration, uh, PFR uh, is much lower, is it? Then, all right, you have it. And then, uh, just add this one more, like this. So here, as you can see, uh, this is the deg degradation profile of uh, CFSTR, of the uh, uh, contaminant uh, dichloropenol. And this one is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, concentration profile for degradation of uh, dichloro, you know, phenol. So, uh, as you can see, which one has higher efficiency? Well, as Michael said, if you are using PFR, you have more degradation of contaminants. So this is the reason why you guys want to propose to your client you should use PFR at this experimental condition. This is very, very important. Got that? Great. And also, at the, uh, uh, these two are, you know, this is PFR and this is the uh, uh, CFSTR, but zero folder, as you can see, the equations are the same. So if the reaction uh, order is zero folder, well, you can use PFR and you can use uh, CFSTR, the same thing. What about the uh, second folder? Second folder. So, uh, I think I'm.
what you should do is CA0, CA divided by beta and uh, K2, let's see, like this. Wow, this is very, very difficult, is it? Very difficult uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, high school student or for the, uh, uh, you know, chemist or biologist or for the, uh, you know, engineer. This is very, very easy. So this is the reason why you guys need to know and run numerical analysis. Well, just don't say, well, I really, I never ever had you know, numerical analysis courses before, so professor, I can do that. <coughs> That's not uh, your answer. Right? Have it. Or if there anybody who wants to solve this problem, well, bring it to me, and I will give you one point for a final. I believe in that. As I already talked to you, if you are an environmental scientist and engineer, you mostly have very uh, strong interest uh, in this section. CA is your problem, right? Well, uh, you know, CB should be the problem. As I already talked, uh, the environmental engineer, 1970s and 1960s, they just care about the, uh, uh, you know, BOD or COD. This is it. But the important thing is, well, you guys can measure this one, BOD, COD. Why? Because those are connected with column ring, right? So micro... Organisms actually can hit those, you know, uh, carbon. Think about that. At the uh, at the uh, uh, wild, you know, uh, world, the microorganism they are very poor. They really don't have anything to it. Think about that. They just find out the carbon source serve on the uh, sand, serve on the clay. If they find it, well, they are very lucky, actually. They can survive. What if they, can, they cannot find any carbon source? They need to die, right? But think about that. Uh, this is wild, 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 you know, uh, field, and the, the microorganisms, you know, Junte uh, micro microorganisms and take microorganisms. <laughs> uh, well, it is very difficult to live, but sometimes they can you know, luckily find some carbon source that could be you know dead body of moles or dead body of cockroaches. Well, they can use it uh, for their living. But you know, if this is a desert area, well, they cannot live. You know, Actually, but fortunately, the very you know good people, one temporary car, right here, and then they just uh, discharge something. But they really uh, didn't know what they are. But these books actually can feel something can smell of carbon. But unfortunately, if the discharged material are this, what happened? They die, right? But some of them can survive. Mutation, right? Maybe, uh, think about that, maybe 2,000 or 1 billion, billion years, uh, you know, uh, just to go uh, fast away. And our, you know, kids at that time, if they don't have any food source, what happened? 
you know, they may uh, do the very similar thing what the microorganisms actually uh, is doing right now. The same thing, you know. Although these chemicals are very toxic, if they don't have anything to it. What they want to do is they want to mutate themselves and then start to degrade this one. This is the way, the way how the humankind, you know, exploit uh, the microorganism actually. Humankind is very, very bad, bad animal, you know, for their you know, purpose actually. So for the uh, environmental engineers, well, this can be actually, actually calculated as a BOD or COD. Because if you are using microorganisms uh, for measuring of BOD, well, you just measure O2, actually. You need to have microorganisms, that's it. But the important thing is, this could be, you know, degraded a very different way. If you are using reductant, and if you are using oxidant, well, this chemical actually degraded totally different way. The important thing is, sometimes, you know, this tucurin is much more beneficial, uh, you know, compared to the uh, one chlorine. One chlorine monochloropenol uh, sometimes shows much more toxic, you know, chemical effect. So, 60s and 70s, they don't care. If they can detach one chlorine here, they think they have success. But the problem is, after, you know, cleaning this one, the people drinking this water, they are drinking with one chlorine. They started to have cancer. Those are the problems, right? So we want to know, not BOD and COD, we want to know the chemical itself, actually. This is possible nowadays because the you know, development of the analytical chemists, you can uh, you know, detect any you know, uh, molecules of chemicals nowadays. So you guys really, really have very strong interest in uh, this model compound. And also, you, nowadays, you guys really have a strong interest in total compound because total compounds sometimes show higher toxicity. And this can actually produce, you know, uh, the source of carcinogen, actually. But uh, as a pharmaceutical uh, field, uh, well, actually, most of the people uh, don't have any, you know, concern about the uh, uh, CA. One thing they have interest, uh, put on interest in the CB, the products. They want to produce new chemical to cure uh, all sorts of disease, actually. So CV is also important. So how do we calculate, uh, how do we estimate, or how do we predict the concentration of CV? Well, we have uh, CV, you know, equation CV0, CV uh, theta like this, or I don't know, CV0, is it? Uh, well, anyway, that is not important. This, this is our B right this right? So how can you derive uh, this equation to have uh, this uh, wonderful algebraic form? How can you do that? Thank you. Yeah. What do you want to, how do you uh, solve this one? You want to know uh, the concentration, I mean, the amount of uh, a strict uh, cure drug. Because you are a uh, pharma, pharma, pharmacology you know, scientist. So, uh, well, you have uh, the concentration prediction equation here, but you don't have any, you know, interest uh, in it. But this one actually uh, can give you money. So how can you... Uh, you know, derive this uh, equation to have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, algebraic type of uh, prediction equation. What do you want to use to derive it? Let's put this equation. Anybody? Yeah, Vinny. 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 Yeah, Vinny.
Yeah, well, I think um, as an engineer, you guys can do that, but uh, it would be very, 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 very you know, difficult. I think um, I would like to talk to you this one. Using stoichiometry, you guys can really, really easily have the concentration of prediction equation uh, for CB. Got that? All right. So this is for the, uh, uh, as a way to uh, first order CFSTR uh, and uh, irreversible. Uh, well, as I will talk, if anybody who has very strong interest in solving second order because uh, he or she really like the, uh, to solve the uh, differential equation, please do so. I uh, will give you uh, one uh, point. Alright, uh, what about the uh, uh, state state actually? This is also state state. Uh, first order, but it goes reversible way. So this one would be k1, and this one could be k uh, minus 1. Right? Reversible. So Ra net could be k1ca minus k1cd. Right? So uh, this one is first order, uh, as you guys know, CA0, CA over theta could be K1, CA, K, CB. This is the uh, governing equation uh, of the reaction, actually. So how do we solve this one? Thank you. What do you want to use to solve this a little bit complex equation. Mm -hmm. Mass balance? 
No, this time. This time. This time you want to use? Stoichiometry. Yes, you want to use stoichiometry here. Let's do the uh, stoichiometry again. So. Well, the same thing, you know. So they, so they not. CB0 equals 0, no B, no A, equals 1, uh, from the uh, initial and boundary. Conditions. So you can have CB, CA0, CA actually. So CA0. CA divided by theta could be K1 CA minus K minus 1 CA0 CA. So here you can have CA, of course, CA not 1 plus K minus 1 theta. One plus K one plus K minus one. They are like this. Okay. So this is the well, and also you can have the CV, you know. So how do you want to solve this one? <laughs> Using stoichiometry again? Well, uh, this is for you. Uh, well, these are only uh, in candy case. As I already talked to you guys, you are actually doing direction. Let's say this is concentration and this is time time or theta, this one actually degraded like this, right? So uh, you are actually doing uh, the study, actually, in this period. So concentration actually, you know, uh, change with respect to time. But this one, no concentration, concentration change, going equally to you. Well, we already did it before, but the important thing is, at this, you know, uh, point, this could be equilibrium, and this could be kinetics, right? So using this kinetic uh, equation, well, we can derive, we can derive the concentration at equilibrium. Isn't it interesting? Right? Well, we can do it uh, with equilibrium itself, but we also develop kinetic cell, but using uh, this one, we can derive the concentration of A at equilibrium. Well, we'll do this uh, next time, and somebody start to yawning. <laughs> Man. Okay, uh, any questions and any comments on the lecture material today? Um, well, I think I'm, I will, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, the end of the clinic part, and uh, uh, I uh, uh, will give you uh, some lectures related to uh, uh, statistics, regression, and uh, uh, risk scare method, how to get the uh, rate, and um, late the work. Um, I think I'm going to take a couple of weeks or one week uh, and then think about uh, what is the next stop uh, to, uh, you know, per uh, environmental engineering. I think. Well, there are, well, you know, most of the environmental engineering courses, you guys can have uh, many different environmental engineering techniques for air pollution and water pollution and 
the soil and groundwater portion, actually. Uh, if you don't know the reaction you know, mechanism itself, and the concept uh, of the uh, reaction, and that the mathematics uh, in the reaction, well, actually, you, can, you cannot say you understand uh, the technology, actually. Because you need to design that. How can you design you don't know the reaction mechanism? And you don't know what's going uh, you know, on in there. So the important thing is just running uh, the introduction of what they are. Well, actually, they are very, very stupid. You guys can run uh, by yourself. But the important thing is these you know, basic uh, chemical uh, and also environmental you know, scientific knowledge. I think um, uh, I will teach you a couple of you know, ways for statistics, environmental statistics. And also, if I really have time, I will uh, introduce you uh, some examples of uh, environmental technology. Uh, or, if I really have uh, much more time, I will take to the uh, uh, environmental you know, uh, facility, you know, site visiting. You know. uh, but that could be very, very uh, you know, impossible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good weekend. <laughs>